Ironically, when I went through my healing, part of healing was to tell the truth to my parents. Mm. And um, it was hard to do that. And their response was, we're so sorry you didn't trust our love and that we would that we would love you through it and that you couldn't come to us. And obviously that broke my heart um, as an adult to realize, and, and by then I was a parent, so I understood that um, in a way I hadn't before. So it was very difficult. Georgette Forney is the president of Anglicans for Life. She had her abortion many years ago and ultimately decided to use her pain to help others by forming an organization called the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. The organization is built to raise awareness about the physical, spiritual, and emotional harm abortion does to women and to let those who are hurting from abortion know help is available. Georgette, thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be with you and your audience. Thank you. You were very young when you unexpectedly found out that you were pregnant. Can you speak to that time in your life and what uh, um, options did you think were available to you when you realized you were pregnant? Yeah, um, it was interesting because I remember sitting in the cafeteria at, the, at school, at high school, and I was telling my girlfriend that, you know, I was late. And she said, you know, well, if you're pregnant, you can have an abortion. Now, I was 16 and I had heard about abortion, but I was not really paying attention. It wasn't a priority in my life, obviously. But all of a sudden it was like, oh, I have to pay attention. Um, and when I found out, I, I confirmed that I was pregnant. Um, I was, you know, I, I called the clinic and it was a very simple process to go down. And I remember driving down to the clinic and, and, and I can still sense that place. I was in my car and I was driving and I remember thinking this feels wrong, mm. but it's legal so it's got to be okay. Like, like you could tell there was, there was a moral compass in me trying to warn me not to do this. But I was afraid. I didn't want to disappoint my parents. I'm the youngest of four kids. And I was the good girl in the family. So I, I didn't want to be that girl. I was more, in all honesty, now that I look back, I was more afraid of what people thought of me than really doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a hard thing to face, um, being a people pleaser kind of um, personality that I, was cared, I cared more about my reputation. And it wasn't until 19 years later after um, going through, or it was 19 years when I finally I could say that I had an abortion, but I could never allow myself to think about what I aborted, mm -hmm. who I aborted. Mm. And it was in that moment of reality, that slap upside the head of reality, if you will, that I realized the, the full impact of my awful decision. I calculated pretty quickly that I would have an 18 year old child and I started realizing all that I had missed and all that I had aborted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the baby, it was the life of that child. Yes. A few years after that um, experience, I had gone through healing and um, one of my good friends, their daughter was the age my child would have been. Mm -hmm. And I walked into her wedding and it hit me that I missed out on my child getting married and I burst into tears. So. It was weird to me how that loss would show up in the most unexpected moments. And let me just say, everything that you were feeling, I, I can just uh, feel so much compassion for that. You were 16 years old. You know, you're, you're probably thinking, what are you gonna do on a Friday night? You're not thinking about making these life-changing decisions. And so I can understand that. Yes. What's interesting to think about is when you went into the doctor's office at 16 years old, did you find that the doctor was very attentive 
to you being so young and and what did he share about the consequences of that decision? No, if anything, I would have to say that he he affirmed the sense that I had done something that was shameful and that I needed to find a solution that would get me out of this. Mm. It's, it's interesting thinking about you having to silently suffer because you did not tell your parents, as you said. In looking, yeah. in looking back, do you feel like uh, things would have been different had you spoken to your family about this? Yeah, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. Um, ironically, when I went through my healing, part of healing was to tell the truth to my parents. Mm. And um, it was hard to do that. And their response was, we're so sorry you didn't trust our love and that we would, that we would love you through it and that you couldn't come to us. And obviously that broke my heart um, as an adult to realize, and, and by then I was a parent, so I understood that um, in a way I hadn't before. So it was very difficult. Um, it, it, it was a very, I think had I gone to my parents, I, I wouldn't be sitting here doing an interview with you because I would have never gone through healing and started the campaign. <laughs> You know, I, I have to trust God, but it was an awful choice and one that I um, has certainly changed my life and, and ended the life of my child. Yes. And, and how and how could it not change your life? Such a such a traumatic experience. But also um, fast forwarding just a little bit, you were able to go on and become a mother and have children. Is that correct? I would, yes, we have one daughter. It's beautiful. So does that feel redemptive to you that the Lord allowed you to then also give birth again to another child? Yeah, um, our daughter, um, it was interesting because I really, um, I, I really wanted to be a mother um, as, as my biological clock went off. Um, but I was very fearful that somehow or another, the Lord would, uh, God would retaliate um, in my child having some sort of um, uh, a birth defect or, um, a, you know, physical health problems. So when she came out um, with 10 toes and 10 fingers and was just absolutely adorable and, and precious and sacred, um, my fear then transferred to something bad was going to happen to her if I didn't protect her. So um, when they talk about helicopter moms, I was kind of like a helicopter mom on steroids. <laughs> um, I, I, was, I, was, I was kind of crazy. I mean, to the point where I made all of her clothes, I made her bed linens. It was like I felt like I had to create a cocoon for her um, in, in the way that I decorated her room with the canopy bed and all these details where I really... I could look back now and realize that I was, in essence, trying to encapsulate her mm -hmm. to prevent her from any bad thing ever happening to her. Which, because I was sure that it was my fault that it would happen. Right. Feels like a very natural. I mean, many parents feel that way. You know, they don't want anything to happen to their child, but even more so. Um, with the experience mm -hmm. that you had. I have heard you speak before about, you know, we, we hear about the evils of abortion, but one of the things that really began changing your heart is when you realized the compassion of Jesus in your situation. Mm -hmm. Can you just speak a bit to the spiritual journey that you were on um, with the Lord as you experienced the yeah. trauma from this abortion? Well, I, um, it, the thing that was interesting was that I had become a Christian when I was 23. I had my abortion when I was 16. I had become a, a Christian, I guess I was about 22 and a half. And I remember thinking at the time I was in the shower and I was going through my list of sins and, you know, the water's washing over me, washing them away. And I remember getting to that place where it was like, the abortion, that's not forgivable. Mm. Therefore, we'll set that one aside and I will accept the fact that there will always be that between us. 
And so when I was trying to grow in my faith, that had to always be that kind of boundary that I couldn't let God into, nor was his forgiveness given to me on. So when I went through the abortion recovery program that I attended, Forgiven and Set Free, and you have a lot of scriptures that you get to read, and you get to really understand in his word that his love is unconditional, and there is no sin that is greater than the cross. Amen. That truth for me changed my life. That unconditional love allowed me to bring that abortion, that baby, to him and receive that forgiveness. Um, on the one hand, it was truly um, uh, that sense of feeling set free, you know, forgiven and set free, if that's the name of the program. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, I started realizing right away, I'm not the only one that feels this way. <laughs>